St. Petersburg, now the city of Tampa, to implement a mask requirement for workers and visitors to a business within their city. This is going to affect, similar to St. Petersburg, in the city of Tampa, 5 o'clock on Friday. What do you think? J.B. Buna here with you live, everybody, on WFLA Now. This is a story that we just published at WFLA's app and WFLA.com. You could read more about it. But it was during the Hillsborough Emergency Policy Group meeting a short time ago this afternoon that Mayor Castor said the community is looking for leadership, and that is what they need right now. I'm going to be putting a mandatory mask ordinance for the city of Tampa right now to protect our citizens. The Ordison uh, ordinance, excuse me, we're being told will go into effect Friday at 5 o'clock. So anyone, it's not just, you see here on the bottom of your screen, it says Tampa to require masks for workers. It's also anyone who visits a business. So the way that this, under, we haven't actually seen the ordinance, so we don't know exactly how the rule is going to be put into effect. We might be hearing from Tampa Mayor Jane Castor in a Facebook Live in the hours ahead here this Thursday evening. But we're told that this is how it works. That if you work at a business here in the city of Tampa, you have to wear, um, that employees at Tampa area businesses have to wear masks. And anyone walking into a business must cover their mouth and nose with a mask or a face covering. So anyone who is a Tampa employee and then anybody who interacts with a Tampa employee visiting an area business, a city business here in the city of Tampa, they'll be required to wear a mask or a facial covering. The only exception would be if people are eating or drinking, which of course masks make it of course much more difficult to eat or drink. So area restaurants, that of course applies to you. Outside, you are not required to wear a mask. However, if you cannot social distance, they are recommending that you do wear a mask. And it's also worth noting here, everybody, that the Hillsborough County EPG passed in a five to three vote today to have the their attorney draft up a similar rule that would go into effect countywide in Hillsborough County, but that's going to be discussed Monday at Monday's EPG meeting in Hillsborough County. Hillsborough County, of course, being 10 minutes time, six o'clock uh, will be her update. And you can hear it from, well, this is the first time we'll be hearing from her since the EPG meeting, but you'll be able to hear it here first, everybody, what this rule is going to look like. Again, expected to go into effect Friday tomorrow at five o'clock p.m., and what exactly the rules are going to be. Mayor Castor in these daily updates usually takes questions as well, so we'll be listening in to see exactly what Mayor Castor has to say. In the meantime, as we count down to 6 o'clock Eastern time, J.B. Buno here with you in our stream center, what do you guys think? I, I want to hear from you, everybody, here in the Facebook Live comment section. Why don't we launch a poll here, everybody? Let's hit a few buttons here. And we're going to ask a poll here. Do you agree with Tampa's mask requirement for employees and visitors to Tampa businesses. What do you think about the rule? Let's go over some of the comments here, everybody. If you use the hashtag HJB, I'll be reading through uh, some of your comments here in the Facebook Live comment section. You see the hashtag here on the yellow stripe here on the left side of your screen. If you use that hashtag, that signals to us that you would like for us to read your comment aloud. Uh, Liddy McHenry, hashtag HJB. Thanks so much for always bringing these lives to our homes and for valuing the opinions around the Tampa Bay area. Of course, that's what we do here on WFLA Now. It's about giving you a voice. It's not about what we think here. It's about what you think, especially if you live in Tampa or if you live in St. Pete or if you live here in Tampa Bay. Uh, what do you think about certain municipalities, certain cities? Again, St. Petersburg and Tampa beginning at Friday, basically putting an ordinance into effect that restricts or mandates, I shouldn't say restricts, mandates that uh, certain individuals have to wear masks in certain places. In St. Petersburg, it's, it's very simple. It's uh, employees at a business um, that interact with customers. And, and we had a great question yesterday, and we're gonna find out here in a few minutes time if, if Mayor Castor's rules are similar to what has been put into effect or what is going into effect in the city of St. Petersburg. But we had a great question yesterday asking, okay, if it's a mechanic, and a mechanic is working on a car, do they have to wear a mask? The answer in St. Petersburg is no. But if the mechanic goes and interacts with the customer at the front desk and then they're starting to, you know, obviously get close to that customer and maybe, um, you know, exchanging keys or if they're, you know, exchanging credit card, whatever. If you get close to a customer, you then have to wear a mask. So the mask mandate applies when you're interacting with customers in St. Petersburg, but not when you're, let's say, in the back working on the vehicle itself if you're in the shop. So that's a great sort of uh, sort of analogy there that we have um, uh, that people have been asking about, you know, hey, does this apply to my business? If you're interacting with customers, if you're interacting with guests at your business or out and about, 
you do have to wear a mask in the city of St. Petersburg. If the Tampa rules are any different, we're going to find out in about six minutes' time when Tampa Mayor Jane Castor uh, begins her Facebook Live. Lynn Kreef Snyder, hashtag AJB, I guess they'll tell us if there are exceptions to this rule. Yeah, until we talk about this all the time, everybody. Politicians can institute rules of their own and they can say one thing, but until we actually have the text in hand, whether it's a, uh, an executive order from Governor DeSantis, it's a rule that's put into place by the Hillsborough County EPG, until we actually have the document documentation in our hand, we don't know what exactly the rules, the exceptions are, what is enforced, what, what isn't necessarily included. So we're going to find out here, everybody, in a short time. Marianne Neglia, uh, hashtag HJB. Yes, yes, I think it would help so much. Please, Mayor Castor, do it. Do it for all of Hillsborough County. That's the comment here from Marianne, a WFA Top Facebook fan, in big capital letters. Um, let's see here. James Judge, hashtag HJB. This is crazy. This is an infringement on individual rights. These individuals should be allowed to choose if they would like to wear a mask or not. They should not be forced. And then I'm not going to read the, the remainder of that, of that comment. Well, I'll read it. This is not communist China, is what James Judge here is saying. Everybody, we, we, we try to, everybody, we try to keep um, any inflammatory comments from being read here aloud. But I understand what James here is saying by saying, uh, this is not communist China, James Judge uh, saying, hashtag HGB, this is crazy. So there are people that believe that this infringes on their constitutional rights as Americans. And whether or not there's going to be lawsuits filed in the months, years ahead remains to be seen. But we talked about this yesterday when St. Pete uh, instituted their mandate to go into effect Friday at 5 o'clock. Um, there's a lot of folks who believe that this infringes on their constitutional rights as an American. What do you think? Use the hashtag HJB. We'll read some comments. Again, in four minutes' time, Tampa Mayor Jane Kasser will be providing us with an update. Again, a live look here at... The City of Tampa's live stream, it says coming up at 6 o'clock, Mayor Caster's daily update. And we're expected to get uh, information on the ordinance that is expected to go into effect 5 o'clock on Friday, that being tomorrow. Maybe she also uh, dropped some other announcements here in this Facebook Live that's about to start here. Everybody on WFI now. Uh, Jeff Aaron uh, tagged a friend and said here, let's see, Jeff Aaron, a WFI top Facebook fan, had there. Jeff, my neighbor says he doesn't care what Jane Castor says. He is not wearing a mask. What's enforceability going to look like if somebody is not following this, this mandate? It'll fall on Tampa police. Remember, it, it's within, think about it from a jurisdiction standpoint, right? It's not something necessarily that falls in the Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office to enforce. It falls on the city of Tampa so Tampa police enforce city of Tampa rules, so it would fall on Tampa police to enforce the rule. If somebody is in violation of this requirement at a Tampa business, how is that going to be enforced? What, uh, what could the fines or any potential punishments be? And how is Chief Dugan and the Tampa Police Department going to approach this from an enforcement standpoint? I guess we'll see, everybody. Kevin Tucker, hashtag AJB. This whole thing is a mess and makes no sense. The mechanic gets in the car and has no mask on. Therefore, droplets get in the car. This is all part of installing fear into the public. No one looks at all the angles. Kevin Tucker with the hashtag HJB comment. We'd read all kinds of comments here. And uh, I don't, uh, I think this is about keeping people safe, Kevin. I understand what you're saying with the mechanic metaphor. That, that's an interesting point. You would hope that the mechanic would sanitize the car thoroughly before handing it over. Again, back to our metaphor from earlier would sanitize the car completely before giving it back to the customer. And when I was envisioning the mechanic working on the car, I was thinking of maybe the, the, uh, the, the vehicle up on a lift and working on maybe the exterior of the car. But if the, if the mechanic is getting into the car, you would hope the, the mechanic is, again, wearing a mask and practicing really, really you know, safe practices, making sure that, that you're keeping the interior of the vehicle clean and free from any bacteria or anything that could... Um, that could contribute to the spread of COVID-19. Lewis asking hashtag AJB, you're going to be going live with Mayor Caster's update? Sure am. It'll be right here, everybody, on WFLA Now in about 60 seconds here. So 6 p.m. is when this Facebook Live is scheduled to begin. 
and we'll have it here for you momentarily here, everybody, on WFLA Now. So as soon as Mayor Caster appears, we'll bring that to you here live. In fact, why don't we do this? Make it a little bit easier for me. What we'll do is we'll hit a button or two here like this, and now we can all see this here together, everybody. As soon as Mayor Caster begins her Facebook Live, you'll see it, I'll see it. This is a live picture here from her live stream, everybody. So we'll see it here in a moment. Let's see. Rosemary Diamond, hashtag AJB, just returned to New York after six months at my Florida home. The mandatory masks is terrible. I can't wait to get back to my Florida home where masks are optional. Hashtag say no to mandatory masks. Uh, Deb Maxwell, hashtag AJB, those who would give up essential liberty to purchase a little temporary safety deserve neither liberty nor safety, quoting Benjamin Franklin. That's Deb Maxwell here in the Facebook Live comment section. Craig Holmes, uh, hashtag AJB, liberty greater than security. Peggy Burton, hashtag AJB, took my car to a mix yesterday. Yeah, Robbie Torres, hashtag AJB, what about Hillsborough County? Uh, the Hillsborough County EPG will be voting on this come Monday. There was even disagreement today on whether or not the the EPG's attorney should even draft up the language for this order. And here is Mayor Castor, everybody. Let's listen in here live. I just want to announce to everyone that based on the increase in the number of positive COVID-19 cases that we have seen in the city of Tampa, and uh, by increase, I mean a 900% increase in the last month in positive cases here in the city uh, for the entire county. We have four out of the five highest zip codes for positive tests uh, in, in the city of Tampa. And a lot of people are saying out in the community that um, the only reason we're having positive uh, case increases is because we are increasing the testing. That is true. We are increasing the testing dramatically. We are asking everyone to come and get tested. Uh, our goal is to have 2,250 people tested a day in Hillsborough County. But if you look at that ratio of testing to positive outcomes, we are still increasing dramatically at the rate of 100 cases per day. The majority of those increases right now are in the age bracket of 25 to 34. So those younger individuals that when I was young, I felt that I was invincible. And so, you know, that that's that young age group that is healthy and probably can get through this virus safely uh, with, you know, minimal physical impact. The issue is, is that they're taking this home to individuals who can least afford to get this uh, disease. Today, during the emergency policy group meeting, uh, Dr. Holt made a presentation and he talked about the uh, deaths from COVID-19 are still, still very low. However, they're changing. They were associated with long-term care and now he is seeing a trend towards individuals who have contracted it at home from a family member. And so that was one of our greatest fears is that young individuals in social settings would pass on COVID-19 and take it home to those who could least afford uh, to contract it. Now, as the emergency policy group, uh, we were discussing the, the possibility of bringing back language for a facial covering ordinance. I tried back in April to get a facial covering uh, ordinance or order passed through the EPG and uh, was not successful. And so what we did is we worked to encourage different organizations, including uh, all of our grocery stores, the larger grocery stores, pharmacies, uh, home improvement, restaurants, all of our lift up local participants uh, had the requirement for their employees and team members to wear masks and we got the agreement of all of those other organizations that I just mentioned to uh, require that all of their employees wear face coverings and to um, so encourage that their customers to do the same. And so that 
obviously was beneficial, but now we have reached a point with the increase in the number of cases that we have got to, in the city of Tampa, go to a mandatory uh, facial covering order. And this is the one thing that research, all of the research is crystal clear. If individuals were to wear face covering for two weeks, we would cut the spread of COVID-19 by 80% or more. And so we are uh, going to pass this facial covering order that is going to go into effect tomorrow, Friday, June 19th at 5 p.m. And it is very, very simple. Uh, we will have a copy of the draft up on our website. There are a number of exceptions. The only time that you're required to wear a facial covering is indoors. When you are unable to six foot uh, distance separate from others. You do not not required to wear it if you're in your home, your residence, um, no one under two years old. If you have any type of a um, physical condition that uh, doesn't allow you to wear facial covering, then you're not required to do that either. So it's just a very, very common sense requirement to wear facial covering when you are in close proximity with others. Very simple. And we, we hope, I know, that this will uh, dramatically reduce the spread of COVID-19 in our community and that it will save lives. And I am taking this action for the health of our community, for the physical health, but also for the economic health. We cannot, we are just getting back up on our feet economically. And the last thing that we can do is to go in reverse and to have to have businesses closed down. And we've seen that in our community where individuals have tested positive and businesses have had to close down. So it's a very simple step. Uh, Hillsborough County uh, presented a survey, community survey that they did today. And 76% of those individuals that were surveyed uh, wanted um, their employees and others around them to wear facial coverings. So the vast majority of our community is looking for uh, others to wear facial coverings so that we can all remain safe, healthy, and prosperous. All right, do we have any questions? We do. We have a question from Madison Alworth at 10 Tampa Bay, and you covered some of this, but there, I'll just go real quick. Will a mandatory mask order be in place and when? How will this be enforced? What happens if someone is caught without a mask? And what if the citizen doesn't currently own a mask? That's, those are all great questions. So tomorrow, uh, Friday, June 19th at 5 p.m., it will go into effect. The, this will be uh, enforced. It will be first and foremost, the way that we have done everything. We, when we put the safer at home order in place, by and large, everyone complied. And that's why we were able to, to be a national leader in crushing the curve. Now, unfortunately, we are leading the state in the number of positive cases. And so this is the step that we need to take. I anticipate that by and large, everyone is going to comply with this, but uh, we again are going to educate and encourage. And if it comes down to it, it is a civil infraction. So a civil citation will be given. There's no criminal penalty. And if individuals don't have a mask, we will supply them. We will supply them to businesses, we will supply anyone who needs a mask. Um, we will provide that either through the city of Tampa. We've had thousands of masks donated and the county has um, a, a, a huge supply of masks as well. So we will make sure that everyone has a mask available to them. Just one more kind of general question. Are you still able to eat or drink while at a restaurant? Yes, <laughs> you can do that. Again, the common sense, you know, if you're eating or you're drinking, um, then you can pull that mask down. What we're looking for here is to cut the transmission of this COVID-19 in our community through a cooperative effort of all of our residents. So residents, visitors, anybody in the city, 
uh, that's what we're asking. There are a number of uh, counties that have gone to this. Uh, Pinellas County, St. Petersburg did an order just for businesses, which we had had in place as a, a um, compliance, not a mandatory order, but we had had that in place and they're going to a citywide order on Monday and more than likely the county of Pinellas. The only Southern urbanized county that doesn't have a facial covering order is uh, Palm Beach. And we currently are in a race with them to be number one in the positive COVID-19 cases. So this is COVID-19 and we will be able to continue to get back up on our feet and move forward economically. So I thank everybody in advance for their cooperation. And if you don't have a mask, I've got one, I'll give you. Thank you all. And that was Tampa Mayor Jane Castor a short time ago, everybody. Actually, that was her live, everybody, on the City of Tampa live stream, everybody. So there you have it, a civil citation, and they will be supplying masks to those who do not have them. Still some clarification we need on some of the particulars of the ordinance and how it's going to, uh, how it's going to, to look for Tampa businesses and what is going to be mandated exactly. Uh, whether or not uh, all workers within the city of Tampa or whether or not it's going to be um, just ones who interact with the public or uh, Mayor Castor said any workers who get within six feet of others. So that leads us to believe that all workers within the city of Tampa will have to follow this mask requirement, this mask mandate, again, going into effect Friday at five o'clock. We'll stay here live with you for another moment and get you to our poll results here. We now have about 1,600 or so poll results, and we'll have them here for you momentarily in about 90 or so seconds. George Butterfly, Butterly, not Butterfly, excuse me, George. George Butterly, hashtag AJB, what about the rest of Hillsborough County? Again, you heard Mayor Castor refer to the Hillsborough County EPG meeting that was today. There was some disagreement there as to whether or not a mask mandate should be put into effect for all of Hillsborough County. That will be voted on Monday, Monday's EPG meeting. So if you want to know if the greater Hillsborough County area is going to be seeing a mask mandate, that's the day to tune in. And we'll, of course, keep posted here on WFLA Now and on our newscasts and on our app and website for the very latest. Uh, let's get to a few, one or two more questions here, everybody. Again, if you use the hashtag AJB, I'll do my very best to answer any questions or just read your comments here aloud. Uh, Luigi... Aaron Dondo, hashtag AJB, where can we get masks or cop the masks? Uh, masks, um, you can, of course, get your, you know, purchase yourself um, from various distributors. Uh, if you don't have one, um, it sounds like the city of Tampa is ready to supply businesses with masks. They're willing to help out in any which way that they can. Uh, wherever you work, go talk to your employer, uh, especially if you're now within the city of St. Pete or the city of Tampa. Talk to your employer about uh, having a mask supplied to you if you don't have one of your own. Some people prefer to have their own masks, um, but it's it's completely up to you and what, what's comfortable for you. Some people prefer a facial covering. Some people prefer a more uh, highly advanced mask like the N95. Just if you have an N95, you're probably that's probably what you're going to be using. Just as a reminder, um, look for opportunities to gain a mask um, and don't be afraid to ask. Don't be afraid to ask for help. Let's see. Uh, Presley Marie, hashtag AJB, where does the money for the fines go? I, I actually, I don't have that information in front of me. I don't know if there's going to be a specific avenue for where municipal funds as a result of a civil citation would be. But um, if there is, of course, a financial penalty. Ronan Lee, hashtag AGB, what about those with breathing medical issues? I, I, I think that there is going to be some um, some room for you know anyone who is unable to wear a mask uh, for health reasons. There's going to be some latitude there for sure, uh, Ronan. Um, it, this is just about for the general public really communicating and getting out there that people should be wearing masks when they're interacting with others, when they're within six feet of others, considering what's going on here in the state of Florida with climbing COVID-19 numbers. 
All right, everybody, our poll results. We'll get to one or two more in a moment. I want to get to our poll results. People have been very, very patient. They're still coming in. We have about 1,800 votes coming in at this moment. Uh, do you agree with Tampa's mask requirement for employees and visitors to businesses? And we got to figure out whether or not it's visitors to businesses. But, um, again, once we have the text, she's uh, Tampa Mayor Jane Castor said there that, uh, that once we have the draft in hand, or they're going to be getting a draft in hand to, to folks sooner rather than later, 62% say yes, they agree with the mask ordinance. 29% say no, and only 9% say that they do not have an answer. So nearly two-thirds of you believe that, uh, that Tampa is doing the right thing and joining St. Pete with a mask requirement for employees, for employees within the city. Could Hillsborough County follow on Monday? We'll, of course, pay very, very close attention to the EPG meeting on Monday. Erica Yenuzelli, Gen, WFLA Top Facebook fan. Hi there to you, Erica. Hope you're having a good Thursday evening. Hashtag AJB. I'd like to see masks required for the entire state of Florida. Let's start healing and rebuilding. Uh, Angela Johnson, hashtag AJB. What are your personal thoughts about wearing masks? Just curious. Uh, I, I'm not one usually to share my personal thoughts. A Angela, this is more about your personal thoughts, but I... I I've mentioned this before in previous streams because I've been asked that question before to share what I think about masks. And I'll just say this. I, I think it's really, really important to put what, if you're one of those people who feel that you don't want to wear a mask to whether or not you agree with it or disagree with it. it I think I, I'm just one of those people who believe that it's really, really important to be courteous to others, that it's not necessarily about you or your personal beliefs, but it's about the people that you live with in your own community, in your own neighborhood, in your own city, like the city of Tampa or the city of St. Pete. And you just be courteous to others. And there are others right now that are very, very nervous. And you might be interacting with others that are in an, a higher age range who are more susceptible to COVID-19 severe symptoms. And it's just really, really important that you put your own personal beliefs aside. You might think that masks are the, are, are the savior for for this country, for the COVID-19 pandemic and, and us getting past it, you might think that it's a complete waste of time. You might think that it's about, uh, we, I, I read your comments. There are people who believe that this that masks are just about creating the, the visual perception of fear. Uh, I, this is gonna, that's gonna get, that argument's gonna get torn apart in the Facebook Live comments. The whole point is, is that I believe you just have to take what you feel and just put it aside for, for a moment and think about the greater good think about the people within your community you don't even think about don't even think about like public in general just think about the people who live on your own street or the people that you shop with at the grocery store or the people that you interact with maybe at your local pharmacy your local gas station just think about being courteous to others that's my i've said that before here everybody and um i have no problem uh repeating it Uh, Sherry Blossom, hashtag AJB, Tampa is doing the right thing. Slow the spread. We need to put others first by wearing a mask. We don't know who we encounter during the day, who may have underlying diagnosis. This is the most neighborly thing to do. That's the comment, the hashtag AJB comment from Sherry Blossom. And yeah, I, I think that there's a lot to that. And remember, you, you could walk by the street, down the street and pass somebody that has a uh, you know, an underlying medical condition that you can't visually see and you would have no idea and you're not wearing a mask and maybe they are, but it, it's all about being courteous to your fellow neighbor. Um, let's, let's all be good Floridians. Let's all think about others instead of, instead of ourselves for a moment. It's, it's just really, really important. Uh, let's see, Kina Hurt, hashtag AJB, all of Hillsborough decides on Monday about wearing a mask? Yes, it's about the greater good, yes. So Hillsborough County decides Monday, Kina, um, or Kenna, excuse me, hopefully I'm pronouncing your name there right. Uh, Hillsborough County will vote on it. Now, I was told, I, I was working on some 